Nonprofit Nature Conservancy has purchased up to 36,000 acres of northern Oklahoma and is returning it to its natural state, Tall Grass Prairie. And today, in fact, just hours from now, America will regain a piece of its history. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo White settlers claimed so many homes, there was no place left for the buffalo to roam. The bison and the tall grass prairie that once fed them almost disappeared. At one time, the tall grass prairie covered 142 million acres, stretching from Texas to Canada. This prairie of 10-foot tall grass was home to millions of buffalo that grazed here just a century ago. Today, only tiny fragments of the prairie remain. The tall grass prairie does not exist now as a functioning ecosystem. And what we're trying to do here is, is recreate one. Harvey Payne is director of the tall grass prairie preserve. We need a few wild places. You can't live in a concrete jungle all your life. He says one of the first steps to bringing back the prairie is to set fires, which once were ignited naturally by lightning. The burning generates new growth of native grasses. The next step? bring back the buffalo. This herd, being held on a nearby ranch, will be released onto the prairie this morning. So what we're going to do is reintroduce bison here, so we will have all of the components uh, that the prairie evolved under, and we can put those forces back into play to allow the prairie to continue to evolve. People don't think about something like as simple as a prairie of grass as deserving this attention. The prairie is as important to save as, as the forests or the oceans or rivers or any other landform. Uh, we feel that, that somewhere there should be a representative sample of tall grass prairie. It's not just the buffalo then, they right. be coming back to the prairie. Right. There's a coyote going across the valley now. We have over 80 different mammals that inhabit this prairie. We have a lot of coyotes, a lot of deer, bobcats, raccoons, and the like. We have over 400 different types of plants on the prairie, countless insects, reptiles, and amphibians. That's what makes up the prairie. It's not just the tall grasses. It's that complete ecosystem. Eventually, the bison herd will number 1,800. For the Osage Indians, the return of the buffalo represents much more than a nature project. It's been about 120 years since our last buffalo hunt. At that time, our population <clears throat> uh, dropped about 75%. Since then, we've been trying to hold on to our traditions, in which the buffalo was an integral part. With the buffalo returning to our country uh, in such close proximity, it, I believe, will have the effect of reviving and strengthening those traditions we have left. We have a chance really to, to recapture uh, something that was very close to being lost and, and something that is a very precious part of this country. And, and I think we'll all be better off for it. And in just about two hours, the first 300 buffalo will be released onto the prairie in Pahaska, Oklahoma. Great story, beautiful country. It Thanks. was nice being out there. I bet, thanks a lot, Hattie. Harry? 24 minutes before the hour, and next Nature Conservancy board member, Norman Schwarzkopf, joins us live from the Oklahoma Prairie. It is 22 minutes until the hour. They probably don't know it, but when the buffalo come home to Oklahoma's tall grass prairie preserve, they will owe something to Norman Schwarzkopf. He's on the board of the Nature Conservancy, and he joins us live from the tall grass in Oklahoma. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Harry. How'd you get involved with the Nature Conservancy? Well, you know, I decided that when I retired from the military, I was somehow going to get involved in conservation and the environmental movement. I looked around at all the various organizations out there, and the one that really fit my style the best was the Nature Conservancy. They're non-confrontational. They have great results. They're very well respected throughout the entire country. And that was just the kind of organization I wanted to become a part of. And why this project? Uh, what, what intrigues you most about it? Well, you know, all of us, I'm standing here in my cowboy boots. You know, I was born in New Jersey. I, all of us, the Old West is so much a part of what America is, what the American spirit is. And here we're, we're recreating the, the very prairies that our great-great-grandfathers had to pass through as they, 
as they had that, that great movement to the West occurred. So I think it's, a, it's something that's worth preserving and worth keeping so that we can show our great-great-grandchildren what it's all about. And we look at, at Buffalo in almost the same sort of way, in an almost romantic sense, but they play an integral part in, the, in this prairie preserve. Explain that a little bit. Well, this prairie, the tall grass, it turns out, is very disturbance dependent. They, it has to have fire to burn off all the other intruding species of grass that come in and choke it out. It has to have buffalo that graze and keep it down and keep, and you know, buffalo move in huge herds and they stay very close together, unlike cattle, and they trample down the intruding grasses. And it turns out that both the combination of buffalo and fire are the two things that are most important for the real tall grass prairie to survive as it was 300 years ago. So is that basically going to be a fenceless place? These buffalo will literally be able to roam free there? Yeah, initially, initially the herd of 300 is going to be kept in a restricted area, a pretty big restricted area. I mean, they're going to be free to roam throughout that area, but eventually we're going to have 1,800 buffalo out here, and they'll have 57 square miles that they can roam across. Isn't that, uh, the very thought of that sort of makes your heart feel good that we can kind of hang on to that or re even recreate something like that. Yeah, you know, there's some places out here where you can stand on the hilltop and see prairie as far as the eye can see in any direction. And when you stand there and realize that a few years from now, you're going to be able to stand on those hilltops and see that prairie and see free-roaming buffalo across that prairie, <laughs> just, as, just as our ancestors did. I mean, it, it's exciting. It really is exciting to me. It really is. I want to talk about something else that is about to happen to you today. You're yeah. You are to get your Indian name. Right. From, uh, is it, it's the Osage, right? That's right, the Osage tribe. That's they've, right. The they've clan made of the you, Golden Eagle. The clan of the Golden Eagle. They have made you an honorary chief. Is that not correct? That's true. And do you know what they're going to name you? <laughs> no. The, the, the elder of the clan, Ed Red Eagle, uh, is the person that bestows the name on you. He's the name giver. And last night, you know, I was sort of probing around saying, gee, what's my name going to be? And everybody kind of looked at me to include Ed very stoically and said, you know, nobody is told that. Nobody even, nobody knows that except Ed himself, and he's going to give me the name this morning here in about an hour. That's great. You going to be standing there when they let the buffalo out this morning? You bet I am. I'm not going to be standing in front of them. Believe me, I'm going to be on the other side of a couple of fences when they let them go. <laughs> General knows the right place to be. Thank you, sir. We do, uh, do appreciate you visiting with us today. And give Paula my congratulations, please. We'll do